JT Shaver here with New Layer, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the new and improved version of the light that I use in nearly every single video, which is the IntelliTech Light Cloth 2.0. For those of you that have seen my review on the original RGBWW version, I'll have a timestamp link so you can skip ahead if you just wanna see the changes and upgrades with this new version. If you're not familiar with the Light Cloth lights, let's take a look and see what makes them special first. The Light Cloth lights are foldable LED mats that come in multiple sizes. There's 1x1, one 1x2, one, one 1x3, and my favorite, the 2x2. Two two. IntelliTech also makes a 3x4.5 foot mega light cloth, but I'll save that for a future video. The three bigger sizes fold up into a 1x1 one one square, so when they're packed up, they take up almost the same amount of room as the 1x1. One one. The 2x2 two two opens up into quadruple the surface area of the 1x1, one one, so it's a great combination of portability, brightness, and softness. They all come in a super durable hard shell case that's water resistant and dust proof. These are hands down my favorite types of cases and it's perfectly suited to a kit like this that's designed for travel. Inside is the light mat itself, the mounting frame and light stand adapter, a soft box with diffusion and grid, the power and control ballast, the ballast mounting bracket, and a few other accessories. To set it up, you just unfold the mat, attach the metal frame using the Velcro fasteners, plug everything in, and you're ready to go. The softbox is optional and it also attaches with Velcro, but especially if you're using external diffusion, it's not always necessary. Speaking of external diffusion, I've been dying to get my hands on the IntelliTech Fast Frames, which are huge pop-up diffusers and negative fill screens, and I finally got my hands on them. These make it insanely easy to turn these lights or any others into a massive, super soft light source, which is the main ingredient for professional film-like footage. I will have a full video on those in the future, so if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe. When it comes to brightness and color accuracy, every IntelliTech light that I've ever tested is superb, and the Light Cloth 2.0 is no exception. I tested the LC160 2.0 with my Sekonic C800 and got the following results. With the light set to 3000 Kelvin, I got an actual reading of 3149, and with the light set to 10,000 Kelvin, I got 10,417 Kelvin. With it set to 5500 Kelvin, I got 5498 Kelvin, so it's only 2 Kelvin off, which is pretty crazy. So in the more commonly used color temperature range of 3200 to about 6500 Kelvin, this light is dead on, and anything on the far edges of the range is still exceptionally accurate considering how wide of a range these lights have. At 5500 Kelvin, I got a CRI and TLCI of 98.1 and 99, with a color correction number of just 0.1 green meaning this light pretty much has no green or magenta tint, at least at 100% power. On the tungsten end, I got an SSI of 86, and on the daylight end, I got 75, which are both as high as it gets. The average brightness across the color range is around 4400 lux, which is about f5.6 at 1 50th of a second shutter speed and ISO 100. There's also less than one third of a stop difference in brightness as you adjust the color temperature, so it's very consistent. The included diffusion panel cuts about a half a stop off the light, which is great. Most two foot soft boxes will cut one or two full stops off of the brightness of a COB light, depending on whether you're using one or two layers of diffusion. With a panel light like this, you don't need a second layer of diffusion because all the LEDs are already spread across the surface area of the light, unlike a COB. Overall, this light kills it in every aspect of brightness and color accuracy. If you wanna see all the measurements that I took, I'll have a link in the description to my light comparison tool. It uses real world measurements instead of manufacturer provided specs so you can more fairly compare lights from any brand. The LC160 2.0 also comes in an RGBWW version. That version has full color support, some extra special effects, and most importantly, green magenta tint control, which I'll talk about a little more later. These lights run off AC power with 100 to 240 volts, so they'll work almost anywhere, and they also have native V-mount or gold mount battery support. Each different size of light has different battery amperage requirements because they use different amounts of power. The LC160 requires 10.5 amps, while the LC50 only requires 6.5, and the other lights are somewhere in between. This is important because some smaller capacity or cheaper batteries can't handle higher power fixtures. This isn't the fault of these lights specifically, it's just true of all higher power lights. Now, IntelliTech isn't paying me for this video, but it just so happens that their Pocket V batteries are my favorites for this very reason. Besides being smaller than most other batteries, they handle higher amperage at lower capacities as well. For example, cheap 95 watt hour capacity batteries typically only handle six to nine amps of power draw, which wouldn't be enough for the two bigger light cloth lights. 
Even the smallest 95 watt hour Pocket V battery supports 12 amps, so it can power all of these lights as well as higher power lights from other brands. I did a whole video on what to watch out for with V-mount batteries in general, so I'll have a link to that here if you want to check it out. If you're just here wondering what the differences are between the old version of the light cloth lights and the 2.0 version, let's take a look. One of my favorite changes is the combination of the AC adapter brick and the light control unit into a single ballast. The old version had a cord going from the wall into the AC adapter, a cord going from the adapter into the control brick, and then another cord going from the control unit into the light. The 2.0 just has a cord going from the wall into the ballast, and then a cord from the ballast into the light. So you have less pieces, and that just makes setup and teardown much faster and easier. The old ballast also used a hanging strap to mount to a light stand, whereas this one has a new rigid V-mount clamp system for a more secure setup. It does have D-rings if you still want to use a strap to hang it on the light stand, but I much prefer the V-mount clamp instead. I mentioned it earlier, but a huge upgrade to the RGBWW version of this is the green magenta tint control. This is especially useful when you want to match these lights with any other lights in your scene. Without tint control, you may get noticeable green or magenta shifts between lights, even if the color temperature between all of them matches. Both the bi-color and full-color 2.0 versions have upgraded special effects with more customization options for speed and intensity. The light cloth itself also has grommets around the edges now, which just opens up more mounting possibilities. And all of the cables are now push lock or twist lock, which just makes setup time faster and gives you more secure connections. Like the original version, the 2.0 allows you to control it on the ballast directly with an optional remote, or now it also supports a mobile app. Right now it's only available for Android, so I personally haven't been able to test it, but a version for iOS is slated to be released later this year. I use the LC160 to light all my talking head videos because it's light enough to put on my desk mounted light stand, and it's also low profile enough that I can fold it up out of the way completely when I'm not using it. And since the setup and teardown is more streamlined now, I have no hesitation with taking it down and bringing it with me on shoots. Pricing on these lights range from $4.99 to $11.99 with the LC160 2.0 bicolor that I have being $8.99. At first that might seem a little high, but when you consider the capabilities of this light in its portability, brightness, and native V-mount support, coupled with the accessories it includes with the carrying case, softbox, and grid, I think it's a better value than many budget lights out there, and this is not a budget quality light. Before you go, leave a comment and let me know what you think. Do you think this would be a better fit for you than traditional COB lights? Links are in the description if you want to check these lights out further. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.